Next up, we got 10 creepy facts about Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, y'all, somebody uh, requested this video last video. I told y'all, if you don't want me reacting any more videos for Jeffrey Dahmer, because there's a lot of videos coming out now, just comment the video name uh, in the comment section below. Um, and I'll react to it just like that. You know what I'm saying? Like the video, comment the comment what video you want to see. Just, just like that. You know, you got the video. Just like that, that, that. You know what I'm saying? Now look, you already know Jeffrey Dahmer like literally like one of the worst serial killers to ever touch this human earth. You know what I'm saying? So let's see some ten creepy facts. Let's see what it is. Time back. I suppose it could have turned into a a, a normal hobby like taxidermy but it, it didn't it veered off into into this welcome to watch mojo and today we're looking at 10 creepy facts about jeffrey dahmer i guess i just i hope that he could be uh, somebody that wanted to see a movie that i wanted to see for this list we're looking at some of the strangest details about the infamous milwaukee serial killer which of these do you find the creepiest? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, intended to build an altar out of remains. What? During his hours of interviews conducted after his capture in 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer confessed that he planned to use the remains of the victims he collected to make an altar to himself. I even went so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar with uh, the uh, 10 different uh, skulls and skeletons. He what the fuck is an altar? Hold on, let me see. Let me look it up real quick. What is an altar? How do I even search it up? Does it mean like? Does it mean like he's gonna add? He's gonna make a body out of like different people? Is that what he's trying to say? He's gonna make it like a. a I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they explain it because I don't understand. Detailed his very specific plan via the photographs he took of his victims and in a drawing featuring two full skeletons and several skulls. All was to be arranged on a black table set up in his apartment with a chair facing the shrine, making it a quote, place for meditation, which he viewed as an area where he quote, could feel at home. However, he was caught before his plans were realized. This dude is literally so crazy. This dude is literally out here. Like, I don't know. Like, bro is just going off the wall. Like, I'm like, you thinking like it's going to end at him just eating people like that's enough. No, he didn't care. The dude literally was. <sighs> Number nine, he talked his way into the White House. Turns huh? out Jeffrey Dahmer was a master manipulator long before he fooled law enforcement. In his graphic novel, My Friend Dahmer, former Revere High School classmate John Durf Backdurf recalled a class trip to Washington, D.C. when Dahmer did the unthinkable. The high schooler lied to White House staff in order to meet then-Vice President Walter Mondale. He managed to get himself and his friends a private tour of Mondale's office. In the film adaptation of the same name, the students meet the VP in person and have a brief conversation. Sorry, excuse me. Just a second. These kids are with the newspaper, their school newspaper from... Ohio. From Ohio. That's a great state. Our fellow Midwesterners. I'm from Minnesota. However... White. It's because he was white. In the comic... That's the only way that was ever... You know what I mean? That was the only way that was even thought of being a possible possible solution onto how he was going to get into the White House. That's the only way, bro. That's the only way he was going to get in there. Literally. Because he's white. And you say some bullshit and it work. Like, what the fuck? Imagine if it was a black person. Just imagine. He'd be like, bro, take some, how's he in here, bro? Take him to jail. They see him working in his office. Still, that is quite the con. Number eight, suspected of killing Adam Walsh. Based on eyewitness accounts of the horrifying day Adam Walsh disappeared, some now believe little Adam may have fallen victim to the cannibalistic killer. After he was discharged from the military in March 1981, Dahmer decided to move to Miami, Florida instead of returning home to Ohio. He worked in a deli, but ended up living on the beach and drinking. When news of his crimes came out in 1991, reports came in from witnesses who allegedly saw him at Florida's Hollywood Mall in July 1981, where little Adam Walsh went missing. Dahmer was there. 
uh, four people who were at that mall identified him after he was arrested by Milwaukee police. They saw his photograph and said that's the guy that we encountered. Dahmer, however, denied any involvement. And since he had just admitted to killing 17 over a span of about 13 years, investigators found it unlikely that he would lie about committing any further crimes. Dahmer killed. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he, cause he like, he didn't care. He didn't give a fuck. So, you know, I think that's probably a coincidence cause he already killed, he didn't already M word and R word kids. You know what I'm saying? He went to far as he, he went. He didn't care. You feel me? So I think with this, he didn't. He didn't do it. It was just coincidence that he was there. Killing Walsh is a strange theory, though. Number seven planned his first attack at 16. As a teen, Jeffrey Dahmer fantasized about an attractive man he regularly saw jogging by his house every day. Weird, bro. Once his fantasies became too great, Bro, he hatched the a plan to attack the man and bring him into the woods to commit non-consensual acts. One day, he hid in the bushes with a baseball bat waiting for his target to pass. He thought he would wait in the bushes with a baseball bat. This guy would come by and um, he'd bonk him in the head and he'd have this guy. Fortunately, the man chose not to head out for a jog that day. After this first attempt, Dahmer never tried to attack him again. He cited this incident as his first real pursuit of violence against another person. It was at this point that Jeffrey's paraphilic fantasies began. Number six, parents fought over his brain. This is another thing too. They so I so at the end of that because I watched the Born to Kill thing that they just show about the when you talking about the baseball bat hit him in the head. I watched that. Um, if I haven't go watch it, it's on my channel. Just go scroll down, y'all see it. Anyways, um, so. They were saying at the end of the video that his his mama got his brain. And she was trying to see if he was crazy or not. See how they trying to make it seem like this dude was crazy? Bro, he was not crazy, bro. An insane person doesn't know what they're doing. They're doing something and they don't know the consequences of what they're doing or whatever. That's an insane person, right? A sane person is someone who knows exactly what they're doing. They know exactly the consequences and everything, but they still they still going to do it because they just don't he just didn't give a fuck. That's a sane person. That's who he was. They try to make it seem, oh, he was a good guy. Uh, I don't know how he did it. He was a good guy. It's just the white people trying to make it, trying to cover up for the fucking, because he's white. That's the only time, bro. That's the only thing why. You know what I'm saying? That's the only reason, bro. They try to make it seem like this dude wasn't crazy, bro. He literally, and he literally said it himself, I knew what I was doing. I knew it. I just, I just couldn't stop myself. I just wanted to do it. I knew what I was doing. And they still say he's crazy. What the fuck? What? I didn't say a thing, did I? The bizarre and disturbing nature of his unspeakable crimes made Jeffrey Dahmer a particularly fascinating serial killer. Studying how his mind worked could potentially find an answer as to why he had these violent desires, making him an ideal subject in criminal psychology research. His mother, Joyce, shared the same view, and after his death in November 1994, she wanted his brain donated to scientists at California's Fresno State University for research purposes. We have a chance here, Lionel, to find out why he was the way he was. Was it something he was born with? Maybe there was some small tumor somewhere? Well, I think each of us has our own idea about why Jeff was the way he was, don't we? His father, Lionel, however, was against it, wanting to move on from the whole tragedy. The former married couple went to court over the matter which ultimately resulted in his brain being destroyed. There were some scientists at Case Western Reserve that claimed they could tell what, why he acted like he did. And it's not possible with a dead person. Number five, received a lot of money in prison. Believe it or not, what? there are many people in the world who idolize serial killers, and wow. Jeffrey Dahmer was no exception. As seen in the Netflix series, he received fan letters with gifts and requests for drawings. Will you send me back, like, a drawing or something? And I sent you five dollars. And according to Wisconsin's Columbia Correctional Institution records, Dahmer also managed to save up thousands of dollars while in prison. By Bruh. March 1994, the inmate had received letters from all over the globe, reportedly racking up more than twelve thousand dollars just from donations. Y'all niggas are fucking 
weird, bro. You know who a fiery fucking was? Was these fucking racist ass fucking people. That's what it was. It was just people were racist. They was like, oh my god, you kill all them black people. Oh my god, yes. Here, here, here. It was it was half it was half racist people and half just psychopaths. Literally other psychopaths that thought about killing people but they haven't got the guts to kill somebody. And he, and they see him do it. They're like, oh my god, he give me the courage. Oh my god, here, has my money, bro. I wanna watch a YouTube documentary about you, bro. Like you're so cool, bro. While some letters were of the suggestive nature, others reached out wanting to discuss religion, provide support, or just become pen pals. Like, Number what the four, fuck? Why would you want to talk to him? Like, what the fuck are y'all going to talk about? Huh? Somehow, can we become pen pals? What are you going to talk about with Jeffrey Dahmer? What are you going to say? How it tastes, it tastes fucking hearts. How does it taste? Did you want to ask him? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, why would you want to be his friend, bro? For what, bro? For what? He, and nine times out of ten, he don't want to be your friend. He just want to kill. He just want to eat you. First murder. In the early hours of November 28th, 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was cleaning the prison gym when he was killed by fellow Columbia Correctional Institution inmate Christopher Scarver. Another inmate on cleaning duty, convicted murderer Jesse Anderson, met a similar fate. Scarver, also serving a life sentence for murder, reportedly attacked Dahmer with a 20-inch metal bar from a piece of workout equipment. Dahmer died soon after the incident, and as chance would have it, back in 1978, a teenage Jeffrey Dahmer killed his first victim, Stephen Hicks, with a dumbbell. Number three, took home a fetal pig. One of the most widely known facts about Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood is that he had a fascination with the internal organs and bones of dead animals, going so far as to collect roadkill. And took them back into the woods, unknown to any of us. What I say? What I say? If you watched the Jeffrey Dahmer video, if you watched it, you knew what I say about these fucking glasses. It's the same Jeffrey Dahmer glasses, bro. Watch his ass too. Hold on. Let's go. Let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Back. Anybody wearing these glasses, bro? You gotta watch. Them. He got the same glass. This probably his. This probably Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. He probably literally wearing his glasses. Into the woods. That's literally his glasses. Unknown to any of us and dissected them just to see what was on their inside. He kept his collection in a hut by his house, filling it with preserved remains in jars of formaldehyde. That's enough, Jeff. Hey, Dad! No, you are spending too much time in here. The Netflix series shows high school students dissecting fetal pigs in a science class. Afterwards, Dahmer asks permission to take one home to practice, which the teacher agrees to. You think I could take one home? Just to practice. <laughs> then they got the glasses to on too. The job, I've been uh, teaching for 22 years and no one's ever asked me that. Uh, sure. However, the real Dahmer was rumored to have stolen the preserved animal from the classroom, likely as a prank. In a 1994 interview, the convicted murderer admitted to taking a fetal pig home while in high school, confirming everyone's suspicions. In ninth grade, uh, in biology class, we had uh, the usual dissection of uh, fetal pigs, and uh, I took I took the remains of that home and, and kept uh, the skeleton of it, and I just started branching out uh, dogs, cats. Number two tried to steal a corpse. And what did you plan on doing? Just wanted to lay with him. In an effort to resist giving in to his murderous comp What the fuck did he just say, bro? He took home a metal he took home a corpse and he wanted he wanted to take a corpse home and do what with it? I just wanted to lay with him. You wanted to lay with it. Don't you understand? Oh, this is another thing I want to understand. So, with this nigga Jeffrey Dahmer, when he was killing everybody or whatever like this, and his house smelled like uh, um, humans, like dead humans, how, did he still smell it? And did he just not care? Because it's strong scent. So did he just not care and smelt it and just walked around? You know what I mean? Or did he get used to the smell? You feel me? Did he get used to the smell? And then another thing too is, if he didn't get used to the smell, 
or whatever. Or he you know if he did used to smell, how did he go outside? Because if your clothes, if your if your house smells like something, your clothes gonna smell like it, right? So how did he walk around everybody with human? He sm he stinked. You know he basically stinked, bro. It don't matter if you take a shower or not, bro. Your clothes smell like ass. I mean not ass, human ass, human dead ass. So how? How? Who is going? Who is taking? How, how did he even get people to come home with him? In an effort I to resist giving into his murderous compulsions, Jeffrey Dahmer sought out alternative ways to satisfy his dark desires. At one point, he stole a mannequin from a store and brought it home, but it ultimately did not work. In the struggle to control his fantasies, his behavior became more abnormal. He um, took a mannequin from a department store, thinking that if he had that mannequin with him and sleeping in bed with the mannequin, etc., that maybe he could control the impulses that way. One particularly macabre idea Dahmer had was to obtain the corpse of a recently deceased male. Dahmer told me that uh, on one occasion he had seen in the newspaper an account of a young man who was killed on a motorcycle. And uh, he fell in love with the individual just from the photograph. He saw an obituary in the newspaper for an 18-year-old young man he found attractive. And after attending his funeral, Dahmer tried to dig up his freshly buried grave. But it proved too difficult since the soil had already hardened. It was March and the ground was too hard and it would have taken forever, so... But I wish I could have dug him up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, brought a head to work. Huh? In March of 1989, while Dahmer lived with his grandma in West Allis, he went to a bar and convinced Anthony Sears to come home with him. After engaging in intimate acts, Dahmer drugged and beheaded Sears, though the killer claimed he hadn't intended to commit a crime before setting out for the evening. Dahmer then kept both Sears' head and private parts in a box. Mr. Dahmer had become extremely disturbed in his thought processes, and the idea that the people he'd killed would somehow live on through him was part of that disturbed thinking. As if that wasn't disturbing enough, the criminal stored the box in his locker at the Milwaukee Ambrosia Chocolate Factory, where he worked nights as a mixer. Imagining human remains inside a chocolate factory just turns our stomachs. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me.